The bottom line rule of adding and subtracting radicals or exponents is that you have to have like terms. So all day today, what we're going to be doing is CLT, combining like terms, which is what we've been doing with like variables and exponents since forever. But this time we're going to be doing it with radicals, which means the radicals have to have the same index, little number, and radicand, the thing underneath the square root. So let's write that down. So if we have like radicals, what that means is they are the same index and same radicand, which again, the index is the little number floating on the outside, and the radicand is just whatever's inside the radical. If those match, then you can just combine like terms with addition and subtraction. If those don't match, we have different rules. So same index, same radicand is what we're looking for. In this first problem, do you see that both of the terms have the same index? Same little number. And they have the same radicand. Like they have the same number underneath the root, correct? That means we can just add together the coefficients of these numbers. The same way we added together coefficients of like regular variables. So there's an invisible one coefficient in front of that first term. And if we're adding it to seven of the same things, we just have eight fourth roots of 10. Like literally it's that simple. Seven plus one, the numbers in front, we add them together. Do not change the thing on the inside. Don't change the radicand or the index. Do you see that? Fabulous. It is literally that simple. So in the second problem, now it's not in a radical form, it's in a rational exponent form, but do you see how the base is the same and the exponent is the same? That's gonna be the same as having the same index and radicand. And if that's the case, again, you just add together the like terms. Two plus 10, the coefficients, that's 12. And then you just keep this stuff the same. Eight to the one fifth power. Don't change the radicand or the exponent at all. But what happens, since we are matching the ones that are alike to be able to add them, what happens when they're not alike? In example three, we notice that they have the same index, but do they have the same radicand? No, so that's a problem. So we have to go back to use some of our other skills to try to make them have the same radicand. Can you break down two, the smaller number? Can that break down at all? No. no, so we're pretty sure that that's our goal, is to get them to match with a two being inside of there. Can we break down 54? Yes. Yeah, how can we break down 54? Like with the tree? Nine times, nine times six, okay. Can I break down those two numbers, six and nine? Six. Yeah, what does six break down to? Two. two and three, and what does nine break down to? Three and three. three, and three. Fabulous. Do any of those numbers break down anymore? No. Those are called prime numbers. Once you get to prime numbers, you're done with your tree. Now, think back to when we did this last week. How many are in the group for this simplifying? Like, how many do I need to circle here to be able to pull them out? Three. three. Why three? Because the index is three. The little number floating on the outside is three. So I need to be able to circle a trio of whatever number. And I circle that trio, and that's gonna be the number that pops out, and the number that stays inside is going to be the number that's left over too. So really, I could rewrite this problem as the following. I could pull out that three, and then leave underneath this cube root, what number? Two. Oh, snap, isn't that what we wanted? And now that we have the same index, and now we have the same radicand, we can actually combine these terms. If I have three cube root of twos, and I subtract one cube root of two, how many cube roots of two do I have left? Two. two. Very good. So this is going to be two cube root of Two, again, do not change the index or radicand. You only change the number on the outside when you're actually adding or subtracting, okay? 
So again, our goal on this one, since they didn't match at the beginning, was to make sure that we get them to match like this before we do adding and subtracting. Does that make sense? Okay, now if that makes sense, let's look at the next problem. Do they match? No. Which one of those am I going to have to break down though? 5 or 40? 40. 40. Okay, what's our goal? What do we want it to say? We want it to say 5 so they match. Okay, cool. Y'all break down 40 for me. Let's see if we can just do that on our own. And I'll come back together for a second. Okay, when you break it down, what's the first thing? I mean, we could all have broken it, broke it down a different way. Um, but somebody tell me how you broke it down first. 10 and 4, okay, that works, because 10 times 4 is 40. Can either of those numbers break down? Yeah, both of them, right? 4 becomes 2 and 2. And what does 10 become? 5 and 2. Okay, what grouping am I trying to circle here? Three numbers, yeah, they all the, the 2s, but I'm circling the 2s because they're a trio. And my index is 3, so I want to find trios to be able to pull them out. And once I can pull them out, I see that I now have the equation. But, uh, whoa, that's not the right number. 3 root of 5, that's just the first thing, plus 2 that I pulled out times the third root of 5, the leftovers. That's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted because I needed these two things to match. Once these two things match, we can just combine like terms. How many cube roots of 5 do I actually have here? 3, because there's an invisible one very good right in front of this. So 1 plus 2 is 3 cube root of 5. Now let's take a second and just make sure we're writing this correctly. Please ensure that your index is actually small, because otherwise it's going to look like 33 square root of 5, and that's not what we're writing. So big 3 for the coefficients little floating three on like the ledge of the shape for the cube root and then the five underneath. Is everybody's handwriting okay on that? Fabulous. That's one of three sections for today. How do we feel about the first section for today? Okay, I'm seeing head, heads nod. That's great. Let's go on the inside. On the inside of this, we're going to start simplifying these uh, radicals, which we've done before, but we only did it with numbers. That's when we made the tree. We found the trios or the pairs or the groups of four, whatever. Well, this time there's going to be variables underneath. And it's really not that difficult because we're still looking for groupings of numbers. Now, there's multiple ways we can do this. So if the way I first show you, you're like, mm, doesn't compute, I can show you a different way um, individually that might be more helpful. But the, the rule here and in the box, what it's trying to tell you is that if the index and the power underneath the square root for your variable are the exact same, then that number just gets to pop out, which makes logical sense because the square root undoes a square. So if they match, it goes away. So in this example, if you have 7th root of 5 to the 7, since the 7 and 7 match, that's just 5. It's like those two things cancel each other out. Same thing if it's negative, as long as it's in parentheses. So what we're going to do on these problems is we're going to test first the numbers. Then we're going to test the variables. What I mean by that is, in problem five, we're going to separate it using one of the product rules that we have for radicands into cube root of 64 times the cube root of y to the 6. I've just separated it into numbers and letters. I find it easier to take them one, part, one at a time numbers than letters. We always want to check our calculator first. Does the cube root of 64 come out to a pretty number? Because if yes, we write down that pretty number. If no, we have to do a tree. So in your calculator, please type in cube root of 64. Let me know if it's a pretty number. It's just four. Awesome. Pretty number. We do not have to do a tree. We know that that's going to be 4. But now we have to deal with this power. The thing is, we know that 3, the index, will go into 6. How many times does it go into 6? 2 times. So guess what? This is going to be y squared. 2 times. The reason this is, is because this is like the cube root of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 wise. Well, how many groups of three do I have here? 
two groups of three. So my power without the root, all of that goes away. I just have squared because six divided by three is two, no leftovers. And like, that's it. Four y squared is how you would simplify that radicand. Can we do that again? Okay, what did I do first? So number six is going to be exactly like number five. What did I do first? Separate. So we're going to separate it into numbers and letters. And this is just how I like it to, to do this. This is not like the only way you can do this. I just find it easier to separate them into numbers and then letters. Because the numbers could potentially become a cute number when I put it in my calculator. Can y'all do the cube root of 343 in your calculator? If it becomes a pretty number, we're done. We write down that number. If not, we do a tree. Seven. Ah, oh, pretty number. Amazing. Great. Awesome. Okay. Now we have to deal with the variable. There are 12 X's underneath that radical. We want groups of three. So we want to divide 12 by three. What is 12 divided by three? Four. This is just X to the fourth. No leftovers. So if those two numbers, 12 and 3, divide evenly with no remainder, then we're golden. These are the easy problems. Sound good? Okay, number 7 is you on your own. It's, it's same as 5 and 6. I want you to do it exactly like I did it. Go ahead with number 7. So if I start this one... What I would do first is I would separate them into numbers and then letters. So I would try the cube root of 729 in my calculator eventually, and then I would worry about the cube root of a to the 36th power. When you guys put cube root of 729 in your calculator, what did you get? Nine, very good. And then when you divide 36 by three, number inside by the index, does it come out to a nice pretty number? Yeah, 12, awesome. So those are like the level one questions of this section because all of the numbers ended up being pretty. But what's going to happen in a problem like number eight, where one, there is more than one letter. I get that. We're going to attack it one letter at a time. But something interesting about these letters is going to happen. So in the problems that look complicated, again, I like to separate everything because I just find it easier for my brain to deal when everything is separated. So I'm going to do numbers. I'm going to do the A's. Uh, I'm going to do the B's, and then I'm going to do the C's. So truly just separating it all out so I can look individually at numbers and letters. If as we're doing this work, you're like, I don't need to separate it, I can see what's happening here, that's fine. But as we're learning, I think it's important to separate them so you can see what's going on. All right, we have a number. We try the number in our calculator. Can you do the cube root of 4 in your calculator, please? Does it come out to a pretty number? No. Okay, so we need to try to break the number down. How do you break down the number four? Two and two. two, and two. It can't break down anymore. Are there any trios of numbers? Mm -hmm. No. So nothing is going to simplify here because it didn't become a pretty number, and I don't have any trios. Okay, that's fine. In the second part, when you divide eight by three, does it come out evenly? No. What is eight divided by three? A decimal, I know, but what is that decimal? 2.6, which means our number that we're taking out is two of them. And then there's going to be some left over. Now, 3 plus 3, which is a, why we got the 2, that's 6. How many are remaining still inside if we only took out 6 of them? So we only took out six, because two times three is six. How many A's are still left underneath that we didn't take out? Two. two. Here's what I mean by that. In this problem, originally, we have eight A's. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight. And I need to circle trios. Here's a trio. Here's a trio. How many did I not circle? Two. two. So there's going to be two trios that I pull out. That's the squared on the outside. And two just left over still on the inside. So if the number doesn't divide evenly like here, there's going to be leftovers. Leave them underneath the radical. In that case, when we do the Bs, how many trios will I be able to pull out for this one? What is 14 divided by 3? It'll be a decimal. 4.6. 4. So I'm going to pull out the 4, the whole number part of it, and then I need to figure out how many are still left over. Well, 3 times 4 is 12. So how many Bs are still left over if I only took out 12 of them? Well, there was 14 to begin with, and I took out 12. 2. Two. Again, for the visual on that one, and this visual gets really big as these get, oof, okay, 14 Bs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And I pull out trios, right? Here's a trio. 2, 3, 4 trios. That's where the 4 came from on the outside, and then how many are left over? Two. That's what I'm doing every time. So for the C, how many C's can I pull out? What is 5 divided by 3? One point something. So we're only going to pull out one C, and then we'll have some leftovers. How many are left over? If you had five and you only pulled out three of them, how many are left over? Two. two. It's not always going to be two. That just happens to be this, this problem. So when we put this all together, and I'm going to erase this because I ran out of, of room, but you've, you've seen the work there. We're going to put all of this together. Any of the numbers you pulled out, you write down first. So all of these numbers that I pulled out, I'm going to write down in the very front, which is a squared, b to the fourth, c to the first power, and then anything that was leftovers, I'm going to put back inside the third root, which was 4, a squared, b squared, c squared. Whoa. It was simple two seconds ago when all the numbers were cute and divided evenly. Now, not so much, but that's okay. It's not that hard. Let's look back at this problem, though, before I, I, we do another one. Why did this 4 stay underneath the cube root? Why did we not pull it out? Say again? We couldn't break it down and get any trios of numbers, right? So we had to leave it. So it's in my final answer. Okay? What did we do with the a's to get this a squared on the outside? How did I know a squared was what was pulling out? Eight. Took just the whole number part of it, yeah. So this number, divide by this number, throw away the decimal. That's how many you're pulling out, and then you just have to think about your leftovers. If the idea of dividing and doing the leftovers is confusing to you, do what I did to show my work on this one, and you can draw all of those A's underneath the cube root. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and look for trios of numbers. I am 1,000% okay with that being how you do this problem because that's a visual way to answer this question. Does that make sense? Okay, we're going to go to the next example, number nine. We'll do this one together, and then we'll have uh, a couple we can try parts on our own. Okay, what should I do first with this problem? Separate. Separate. Okay, cool. So we're going to have the cube root of 7 times the cube root of a to the 10th times the cube root of b to the 16th times the cube root of c to the seventh. I just separate them because I find it's easier that way to attack the problem. Is the cube root of seven going to be a cute number? No. no, seven is a prime number. There's, it, no, no, it just doesn't work that way. So we're going to leave seven underneath the cube root eventually because we know we can't break it down at all. But let's do the a's. 
With this term right here, how many a's am I going to be able to pull out? Three. How did you figure that out? Three times three is nine. Three times three is nine. Nine is less than ten, right? Or ten divided by three is three point something. So I'm going to pull out three groups of threes from a, and how many are going to be left over? One. Because nine plus one is ten. Can you guys do the B and the C for me? Just that part right there. Figure, figure out the B's and the C's. Okay, for the B's, how many did you pull out? Five. Because 16 divided by three is five point something, so we take out five. What's the something that's left over? One, because five times three is 15, 15 plus one is 16. And we had 16 Bs underneath that cube root. What about the Cs? How many can you take out? Two, and how many are gonna be left over when you're done? One, because two times three is six, six plus one is seven. So when we put it all together, what goes in the front? The A, Bs, and Cs that we were able to pull out, or any numbers we were able to pull out eventually. A cubed, B to the fifth, C squared. Those are all the, the front numbers, right? These coefficients, the things we pulled out. And then we put everything else that's a leftover that we did not break down back underneath the cube root, which should start with what? Seven. seven. Good. We didn't forget out about our seven. And then our A to the first power, B to the first power, and C to the first power. Fabulous. Okay, can I make it a teeny bit harder? Please? <laughs> We're going to do it. Okay, the only way this can get harder is if the number itself can break down. So it's not a prime number or impossible to break down. That's the only thing that is going to be different. So if I break this one apart, I would have the cube root of 48 the cube root of a to the 11th, the cube root of b to the 4th, and the cube root of c to the 12th. Looks exactly like the last problem we had. We're going to treat it like the last problem we had, which means we're going to see if the cube root of 48 comes out to a pretty number. In your calculators, can you do that, please? Cube root of 48. Not a pretty number. So for the cube root of 48, we're going to have to break 48 down. I'm just going to use the 48 from this problem and then break it down like this. What is a way we can break down 48? Because we got to check if there are any trios. Six times eight. Sure. Okay, 6 times 8. That works. 6 can break down to what times what? 3 times 2. And 8 can break down to what? Uh, multiplying breakdown. 4 and 2, and then 4 can break down to 2 times 2, right? Okay, all those numbers are prime now. I'm looking for trios. Is there a trio of numbers? As long as there are ends of branches, they count. They don't have to be like, because everybody's tree is different. In fact, the way I did it on the notes that you'll see online is actually different than this. And the, it, whatever. Same breakdown. I have a trio of numbers. And what numbers do I have left over? Three and two. So when we're breaking this down, we'd have a two that pops out. And three and two staying underneath, which means there's a six underneath. Because three times two is six. And that's only for the first part, right? That's only for the numbers. Now, we didn't have to do this in the last problem because 4 didn't break down and 7 didn't break down. But when the numbers break down, we have to do the tree and act like they're an old problem that we did. But now, we're just going to do the letters like we did in problems number 8 and 9. So how many times does 3 go into 11? Even, like 3. That would be 9. And if I'm taking away 9 from 11, how many are left over? Two. Okay, same thing for B. If I want to divide 
four by three, how many is that? Oh, we're overthinking. Four divided by three? One point something, so we want the one. What's the something that's left over? One, because three plus one is four. Now what about 12 divided by three? Four. Is there any leftovers? No. no. So the the radical goes away. If there are no leftovers, it's cute. It's like the front problem. Then we just put it together. Anything you've pulled out goes in the very front. Well, here are the things I've pulled out. A 2, an a cubed, a b, and a c to the fourth. Everything else that's still underneath the radical is going to go back underneath the radical. This is going to be 2, a cubed, b to the first power, c to the fourth times the cube root of everything left over, which was a six, an a squared, and a b. Individually, these problems are not hard, especially if you break them out into numbers and letters and letters and letters. It just looks complicated because it's, it's got a complicated answer. That's it. That's it. I'm going to get you started on 11, but you're going to finish it. On 11, we can see that there are numbers and letters underneath this cube root, so we're going to separate them into different groupings. This would be the cube root of 56, which we will try in the calculator and hope it's pretty. The cube root of a to the 9th, the cube root of b to the 13th, and the cube root of c to the 25th. Once you've got that written down, I would love for you to try cube root of 56 in your calculator. If it's pretty, then we just get to write that number down. Amazing. Is it pretty? Ugh, no. That means you have to break down the number to see if there are any trios. How can I break down 56? 8 times 7. How can I break down 8? 4 and 2. I picked 8 because 7 is prime. We can't break down 7. I can break down 4 to 2 and 2. Are there any trios? Yeah, here's a group of 3. And then I'll have a leftover 7. So this first part breaks down to 2 cube root of 7. Now I'm going to leave you here. I want you to do the letters and then write the whole final answer together. Sound good? Okay, you got it. Did you do the pass? The yeah, you can do it as you're walking because you can do it from your phone. That way you go ahead and go.
compiling my final answer, it's going to look like this. We have a 2 we popped out, an a cubed, a b to the 4th, and a c to the 8th. And then the stuff left over is just a 7, a b, and a c. We're going to go back to the idea of adding and subtracting variable expressions, which is just combining like terms. Again, this is essentially what we did on the front page of these notes. Just this time, there are going to be variables. And like, no big deal. We now know how to simplify the variables, so we might be able to combine these in a certain way. We can only combine them if the index and the radicand is the same. Same rules as the front side of the page. In number 12, what's the index of both of these roots? Two. So they're the same. Are the radicands the same? Yes, yeah, so we can just combine like terms. What's 5 plus 6? This is just going to be 11 square root of y. We just combine our like terms together. Don't change the index. Don't change the radicand. It's just like the front page, right? Okay. If we do number 13, is the index and radicand the same? Index are both square roots and radicands are both x's. Are those exactly the same? Don't overthink it. We can just combine them. 20 plus 10 is how much? 30. This is just going to be 30 times the square root of x. It is literally that simple. As long as the index and the radicand are the same, you add the big numbers in front. That's it. Doesn't matter if the index and radicand get really complicated. Like number 14. The index is the same, right? And the radicand, though it's got a lot of things going on, isn't it the same? Don't change those things, just subtract the numbers in front. What is 12z minus 3z? 9z. So we're going to have 9z times the cube root of 2z squared. It literally can't, it can't get any more complicated. Again, for 15... Index and radicand match, variables match in front, easy peasy, because you have w squared and square roots of w. These, all of these things match. Beep. Oh my gosh, come on, get a highlighter. All of these things match, index, coefficient, radicand. We can just combine the like terms. 3 minus 1 is 2 w squared times the square root of w. Sound good? Not too complicated? Good. But we're going to practice this today in a very particular way. And this class assignment is going to count as a grade. So it hopefully is a boost for your...